Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Maker's Cave. And today we're going to be doing stage two of the Enterprise 1701D by Eagle Moss. Uh, like I said, this is going to be stage two. We're going to be doing the mods, then the assembly. We already did stage one mods and assembly in the previous video. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, then check that out. And if you followed us to this video from that one, I appreciate you for hanging in there. So let's get started. Now we're going to do the nacelle mods where the copper shows when the lights are off and the blue shows when uh, the nacelles are fired up. First, we have to strip all the Eagle Moss blue off the plastic parts. So I got a bowl with 91% uh, is, is propyl alcohol, however you say that. And uh, we just stick them in here, make sure uh, that the uh, level is above the parts. As you can see, it's already starting to turn blue. Uh, now, to keep the alcohol from evaporating, I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap over top. And then put the lid on there. And we're going to let that sit for 24 hours. 24 hours later. All right, 24 hours later, we come back. And as we can tell by the blue alcohol, all the paint has come off, leaving the parts clear. We just need to wipe it off, get any residual blue and alcohol off of those parts. And as you can see, it worked very well. Perfectly clear. All right. After we had the paint stripped, um, one of the things we had to do, uh, according to Todd McWilliams uh, from My Enterprise D, is in order to get the copper to show when the cells are off and then the blue to show when they're lit up, is he laid down this 164th inch masking uh, tape, this pin tape, uh, in, in you know one over the other. You know, it would have a, a section of black, then it would be the clear, and then another section of black, and so on. And then he painted the copper over top of it, removed the paint mask, and then, you, of course, you'd have a stripes of copper, blue, copper. Well, I tried my best to get this tape to stick down. I couldn't get it straight. I couldn't get it to stick. I wasn't sure exactly where to, how to stagger the uh, the, the tape. So I, I did what we do best, and I went to YouTube and looked at some other videos. And there's a gentleman out there, uh, World of Wayne, who's doing a build like this. And he actually played the uh, copper down, the uh, airbrushing, right on top of the Eagle Moss blue. So I said, okay. Let me just spray, let me just put airbrush the back of these pieces blue and then we'll pick it up. So next is painting the back of these nacelle clear parts with uh, Tamea Clear Blue X23. Uh, their clear series simply allows uh, light to shine through what you've painted. So we're kind of doing what we just took off, but according to the directions on uh, My Enterprise D, this is how he did it. He stripped the paint and then he, uh, the Eagle Moss paint, and then he put the Tamea's X23 clear blue on the back. Uh, of course, we're using our newly acquired airbrushing skills here, and it went, uh, it was painless. I do have to make a note to start wearing gloves, though. So here are the clear parts airbrushed with uh, Tamea's clear blue and they're all dry. So we're just going to put some masking on the back of this because we're going to be painting the other side the copper color now. So I just want to put some, I want to make sure I don't get any copper on the back of this. So I'm going to lay down some masking on the back of each one of these parts. So now we're ready to airbrush the copper on the outside of these nacelle parts. We're using Tamea XF6 copper. And we want to use uh, enough copper on the outside of this to make it look copper, but we don't want too thick of a layer because when the nacelles turn on, we want the uh, blue to shine through the copper like it does in the production model. I finally remembered to put gloves on while I was airbrushing so my hands don't turn whatever color I'm using. So we're going to load the airbrush up with our copper using a 2 to 1 ratio which is uh, 10 drops of the 91% alcohol and 20 drops of the copper. Uh, that should get us through this, painting all three of these pieces. Make sure you mix it thoroughly. 
and add the alcohol first, then the paint. Well, as I've said before, devil hates a coward, so let's go to it. With the one done, I decided I better check and see if I had the right layering on there. And this light is super bright. It's way more uh, powerful than what will be in the model. But as you can see, the blue did shine through just fine. Now we'll airbrush the second of the two long pieces. And now we'll airbrush the third and final piece, which is be the rear portion of the cell, the curved piece. And again, we're going to use this light to test the layering, and it looked just fine. Again, this light is way stronger than what you'll see in the model. But as you can see, as it goes underneath, the blue does come right through. And I can always add blue LEDs in the back of this, too, and uh, replace the clear ones that come in the kit with blue ones. That'll increase the uh, blueness of the light, too. Here's what all three pieces look like finished with the copper. I think it looks really sharp. You may notice some blue there, but I'm not concerned about that because that's going to be covered up uh, by the rest of the model as they fit into their resting place. Uh, one important thing we did learn from this mod was is you don't have to strip off the blue paint uh, to make this mod work. You can just lay down uh, the copper with an airbrush on top of the Eagle Moss blue. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to repeat the process I did here when the other nacelle comes in so they match. So that means I'm going to have to go through the process of stripping that blue paint off, uh, repainting the back, the uh, Tamiya clear blue, and then uh, laying down the copper on the other side. But so far, I'm really impressed with this model. And I like how it's turning out. So now we're going to turn our attention toward the Bussard EM field projector. Uh, the Eagle Moss model has this lighting up in an amber color. Uh, the problem is, is the production model on any of the show models, uh, it doesn't light up. <laughs> it's a static yellow color. So we're going to paint this a flat black to block out any light from coming through. And then we're going to airbrush it with a Tamiya flat yellow, which is very close to what you see in the production model and the TV shows. Okay, so I'm going to check to make sure there's no light leaks. And as you can see, there are a couple little light leaks there. So we'll go back with the airbrush and we'll take care of those. And here's another check. And there are no light leaks. So this piece is good to go. Now we just have to paint it yellow. Like the other Tamiya paints, we're using a 2 to 1, which is 10 drops alcohol right here. And then 20 drops of the uh, Tamiya XF3 flat yellow. And here is the uh, projector, all painted yellow and ready to put into our model. Now we're going to uh, strip out the color on the formation light so it's clear. And that's going to be the quickest and easiest mod on the nacelle. Here's the formation light. It's blue, as we talked about before. We want that to be clear because that's how it is in the production model. So I'm going to use one of our cosmetic cases that we use to keep the screws in. I've got that filled with 91% uh, out rubbing alcohol. We're going to put this in here and let it sit for a couple hours and see what happens. Remember, when you put the uh, alcohol in, it's, it has to cover the top of uh, the formation light. It's got to be completely submerged. 
two hours later. Okay, so we came back and we're going to open it up. And as you can see already, uh, most of the paint has come right off of it. If actually, all the paint has come off of it. I'm surprised the alcohol is not blue. But maybe that's because I had so much alcohol in there diluted down the paint. I'm surprised how well this worked. Dry it off. And there you go. Completely clear. Just like it should be. Now, to keep the... Uh, the light from looking so bright and to actually to diffuse the light a little bit better I'm just taking 4000 grit sandpaper here and I'm just lightly buffing the top that's going to be showing through the hole and that's going to diffuse the, uh, the light. If you take a close look you can see how that's just buffed over on the top there so that'll make a nice soft light. Well that concludes all the mods for the nacelle. Okay, let's get cracking on stage two here. Begin by slotting the buzzer EM fuel projector on the end of the nacelle upper. It should fit with its striations flaring out towards the front. Striations. Ooh, big word. All right, so. And metal. One good thing I, I love about Eagle Moss. Okay, so the styration, what it basically means by styrations is these grooves in here, they aren't straight, uh, they aren't absolutely perpet. Oh, let me get you on camera. They aren't absolutely perpendicular to the grooves. They, they kind of angle like an italic to one side. So it should be fitted with the styrations flaring out towards the front. Okay, that's in place. Next, at the other end of the cell, push the formation light into the notch from the inside out. The part will only fit one way. Okay, so if you watched again the mod video, here's the formation light. It was it was originally blue. We stripped the blue off of it and we also Using 4,000 grit sandpaper, we buffed the tip so the light wouldn't be so glaring. It would be a nice diffused lighting. Because in the production model, uh, this is clear. There's a flat edge along the base of the plastic for the formation light. So it only goes into this hole one way. And we got it in there. Finally, nest the buzzer EM fuel projector inside the buzzer fuel projector. This part will be securely fixed in the next step. Oh, the reflector. Um, I see what it's saying. I'm sorry. So. Now, I'm putting this in place, but we probably don't need it because... This is to make it light up, which, you know, we took that feature away because this piece isn't supposed to light up. Put it in there. Okay, so that's done. Next, we're doing this part up here. Place the nacelle upper frame inside the nacelle, up, the nacelle upper and fix in place with an AM screw. Okay, and so upper frame. That's this thing, which I guess diffuses all the light. Okay, fit it in there. And now I need a boatload of AM screws. When I started out with the DeLorean, which was the first one of Eagle Moss's models I did, and we're still doing, we've got to get back to that. I started the first few stages without using any oil. And then I started to use oil on the recommendation of some of the other sites, and what a world of difference. Set up board, I'll say it again. You got to get yourself some oil to drive these screws into the metal. I haven't stripped the screw 
since I started using it. Well, they certainly don't want this piece to go anywhere. Now, thinking ahead, when the other nacelle comes in, I will probably just have you guys refer back to this video for assembly. There is no need in the, when the second nacelle comes in for you guys to have to sit through this again. So in the comments below, I'm curious, how many people are subscribed to the Batmobile? And are really waiting for that. I got noticed that the Batmobile wouldn't be out till early 2022. And, you know, I was really bummed over that. I, I, I wanted to do that one. All right, so this is all done. I got all my AM screws in. Then slot in the cell front O2, 02B on the end of the cell upper and fix this to the cell upper frame with three BM screws. <laughs> I hear you rummaging around back there. There, finally got it out. So it gets slotted into here. Um, it doesn't seem to want to fit. It is without a doubt too big. Oh, well, we got it like this. See, that's the yellow we painted. Um, I'm wondering if I actually have this piece in backwards. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take this all apart, or at least somewhat apart, so I can get into here, and then we'll pick it up. All right, welcome back. So I took off plastic frame that we put in, in here with all those AM screws. And what I discovered is, is when I put this in, I did put it in backwards. I was way off. So I got to turn it around like here. And then this piece fits right on. So now we have to screw this all back in again. Okay, so now we're back to putting this thing on. And this time... It fits. Okay, and that gets held in with uh, BM screws. I'm only dipping these into the uh, rapid tap fluid. You don't need to soak the screws. So after much to do, There's what it looks like. And again, there's that nice yellow paint job that we did. Okay, there's a little note right here. It's showing you that the buzzard collector that we... Bussard collector that we get. Buzzard collector. It's pretty funny. Bussard co collect bussard collector that we get in this kit is not needed till the next till a future stage. So we're supposed to keep that aside. All right. So now it looks like we're going to be doing the uh, sides and the cells with that with the copper pieces that we painted. So. Um, when the ship is turned off, it shows copper. When it's turned on, it shows blue. Okay, and these are held in place with AP screws. You know what else I'm curious about? If you want to leave in the comments below, I'd really appreciate it. Is how many people, you get four issues per month. I'm curious how many people actually call Eagle Moss and double that or triple that. Uh, with the Eleanor, uh, I'm getting two a month. Uh, or eight. I'm so busy talking to you, I dropped the screw. Um, so instead of getting four issues a month, I'm going to be getting eight. Because I want to get that one over with. I want to be careful when I put these in that we don't scratch our paint job. Let's see, what else do I want to know from you guys? Well, obviously, if you like the videos. Um, would you like a live stream? Some people said, why don't I do a live stream? Which 
if, if you knew me, could be very entertaining because I uh, I add a lot of, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it, angry responses when things don't go right. Basically a sailor putting together a model. So yeah, if you'd like to see a live stream of one of these, let me know. And what I'll do is I won't live stream the mods because they take some while. I'll just live stream the, uh, the assembly. That way you can see real time really what's going on because even this one, as I'm talking, there is going to be some editing done so you don't get all the fun from start to finish. Okay, so... Yeah. It's sharp looking, isn't it? But that copper, that's really nice. Alright, and next we do the rear piece. One of the things I was worried about, I was really worried. I don't know why Eagle Moss didn't make this one big continuous U. I, I, I'm sure for simplicity, that's why they did. I was a little concerned about where, um, where the two ends meet. See, there's that break there. I don't. That's not supposed to be there. I, that's one of my concerns. But I really don't know what to do about that. I'm sure, you know, with enough modifications, you can get rid of that. But. Um, I'm not up for that. I think when you have a model that's, you know, 28 inches long, uh, I think you're going to not worry about that break. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so that's all done. That was C. And that's it. Okay, so here's what we have so far that we've got done. We've got <laughs> one half of, of a nacelle. Still going to do the bottom part. Here's the formation light. Um, we got in there all clear because we did the model on that. Here are the, uh, the sides on the nacelle with the copper, which I think looks really sharp. I'm really glad I went through the trouble of painting them. Because, you know, I'm probably going to have this model off more than I am on. So that's going to really give it really some detail. It, it's 11 o'clock at night here, so I'm getting a little tongue-tied. Um, and the yellow buzzard, buzzard, what is wrong with me? Buzzard collector, uh, the band here, um, painting that yellow was really, I like that. That added some flair to it, too. So that brings us to the end of the video for the mods and assembly of the Eagle Moss 1701 the Enterprise. Uh, all the links will be below for any of the supplies and tools that I use during making the mods and the assembly process. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this second stage and can't wait for the next uh, stages to arrive. And as a matter of fact, they did arrive just yesterday, stages three, four, five, and six. So those videos will be coming out pretty soon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when those videos come out, uh, be sure to hit the bell. So until next time, I'm Steve, and thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.